Hey, hey guys! guys. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Woo! We're gonna do that later, it's but more a, fun. It's the Liz and Marvin show, day two. That's right! Here we are. And Luna! And Luna! Don't forget Luna. Hey, bud. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, well, we are back today, and Marvin has got That's another right. soiree. So we're going to soiree. We are about to uh, go full retro today. Yeehaw. We are going back to the 70s, maybe early 80s. Oh, yeah. And uh, show you how it was done back then. Maybe teach you a thing or two. All right. We'll see. We're going to start with what I call reverse antiquing. Ooh. I made that up. I don't know what it's called. I think that's It's great. just a process. It's it, We're going to use antique, but not in the usual fashion. Okay. Sweetheart. It's just and not Luna getting enough attention. Huh? Yeah, it's all right. They finally made right. friends. So what we're going to do is start out with, instead of using a full belt, I've got an eight-inch slice of Herman Oak belt strip here, all right. inch and a half wide, and we're going to stamp it. So to start, let's uh, edge it here. Let's get that ready to go. And That's then a nice we'll, sound, guys. It, that is, I hope you can hear that. That is <laughs> sweet, the sound of slurping spaghetti. Okay. And we need a little moisture. Just a little moisture, Marvin. <laughs> Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. Just the right amount. All right. We can get more if we need it. Now, here's the point at which you would stabilize this piece of leather so it doesn't stretch when you stamp it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to go back. You've got a little piece to the good old days. Sleeves. Yeah. You look into old books, uh, look at old magazines, you'll see where they recommend using rubber cement to secure this to a piece of x-ray film. Oh, interesting. X-ray film, you say. Aren't x-rays digital? I've... I don't know. I've been <laughs> to the orthopedic <laughs> surgeon and they don't use x-ray film anymore. Yeah. So, for those of you who have never seen a piece of x-ray film, that is x-ray film. It's got a slightly there's just, tint. It, there's just nobody's bones on it. <laughs> Hello, Denny. Hello. Yes. <laughs> we are going back in time. Back in time, yeah. Way I was going to say x-ray, that's like Superman era. Well, yes, it is. <laughs> way back. And we've got some rubber cement, so we're going to cement that. To our piece of x-ray film. Go ahead. Oh. Ask yourselves oh. why not use tape? That's right. not new technology. They had tape back in the 70s. Right. The answer is beats me. I don't know why. They just wanted to, to that was, uh, have a use for their rubber cement. Or they tell you to, to, to use a piece of cardboard. And to keep the... Oh, that was clever. Yeah, it's pretty runny, can, that rubber cement. Can you get me a paper towel? I do have that one right here. Uh, I tell you, to, if you didn't have any x-ray film, you could use a piece of cardboard that was shellacked or varnished to make it waterproof. And I'm thinking, yeah, that makes a nice cushion so that your stamping impressions aren't deep. Mm. Right? No, nah, that's not good. At least x-ray film is... Not going to give much. So we'll put a little bit of that and we'll. Am I under the. You are, yeah, oh, you're yeah. good. As I'm long as you kind of work towards the enough. top. Okay. Yeah. And I could cut a slice of this film, but I'm just going to smear some rubber cement on there. Where did you find x ray film? That's a good question. Wayne, the radiologist. Oh, you've got a friend. <laughs> I've got a friend who, <laughs> he has people. who uh, is nearly my age and worked in radiology back when they took a picture and developed it with chemicals and came out with a sheet of film. Did he just and steal a whole bunch of x-ray film when Oh, no, no, no. He just saved <laughs> the rejects for him. No. Well, so you've had this he for a while. Oh, 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 yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Now, I didn't go out and get this last week. No, this is a remnant of my misspent youth. 
for hey, sure. What are you doing down there? All right. This is this is the 1970s system for drying things, too. Yes, here, right? Of okay. So we'll slap that baby on there. And there she is. Stuck right down. Ready to go. Now we're gonna add an edge on this using a creaser. We'll just put an eighth inch edge on this. Just like that. And I do this in multiple strokes rather than trying to get it real deep with one cut, run off sideways and have to get another piece of yeah, leather. That's, that's no not fun. not fun. No. Just like that, we've got an eighth inch border. Hey Marvin, we got a visitor today. More than one? Remotely. Oh, remotely. Oh. You know Brian? Brian. Yeah. I know several Brians. I you have an important one in your I life. I have a son named Brian. Hey, that's who we have. Is he? <laughs> All right. Is he Hi, under? Brian. Good morning, Brian. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you. All right. No pressure now. Gosh, I got the guys back home watching me run off the line here. You know, I've never seen anyone run a creaser like that either. No? Well. No, generally. They turn it around the other direction. And put the, oh, and pull it? Yeah. You mean? Nah. I was never that smart, I guess. <laughs> well, Let me see. You, Take it and pull it. No, you push it. You push it still. Oh, but you but push you, it like that. Yes. Rather than like this. Right. I'll use the, the that, front half of it. Hang on. Well, I'm not saying that that's better. Because you're doing it, gets about the same thing. The yeah, doing it. yeah. yeah. Uh, that was one of those things where I guess I I bought the book but didn't pay any attention. Well, was, huh. you're doing a good job, but I've always <laughs> seen it run like like that, mm -hmm. like this. All right. Well, I'll practice that. Well. See, no, well, heck, I, you know, you're an operator, your right? Life, yeah, <laughs> you disrupted my karma. No, I'm not gonna, so we're going to draw a center line on okay. here. And uh, let's see what we got. Pretty close. And it can be a center line, you can see, because we're going to fill it in. All right. Now, let me get a cat. That's good. We'll see. And we're going to start out using a vayner, a, uh, if you're curious, upside down, right side up, V407. Hey, what? And we're just going to make a series <laughs> of ovals down here. And I'm not going to do this whole strip. Liz, that's more time than I want to spend showing people how to do a repeating pattern. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> we'll come back and join that up. Is my head in the way? No, Is we're that? coming All in right. from the side, so it's perfect. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to watch out for your head this time. All right. We're going to make a series of same stamp on the border. It does not matter whether this matches up with the Ovals I ran down the center. Well, it might matter to somebody. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> Marvin's okay with that it either is. way. And after all, it's my belt. That's right, it is. And if I'm making it for somebody else, he's the kind of person or she's the kind of person that comes back and says, Those the don't stamps matter. don't match. <laughs> I'm going to have to say, ma'am. I'll take my belt back. Thank you. I'll give you the address of Denny. <laughs> Denny would love to work with you <laughs> and get stamps that match. Ah, uh, dear. I have to say, I've never met anyone who did that. All right. So now we're going to switch to a little camouflage tool here. And. Go down. That's kind of a pretty pattern, just like it is. Ovals. Well, it turns out to be you pretty nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It it's this is what you do 
after you've discovered the carving isn't your primary skill, <laughs> right? <laughs> this is what you do. You learn how to stamp a design on there that might be attractive. And I guess I should, since I told him the first one, this is a, you got better eyes than I do, a something 423. <laughs> A C-428. C, C, camouflage. Yep. C, right? Yep. 428. Nathan, 428. Thank you. All no right. No problem. We got that one. Now, we're going to take a cedar, which is, I presume, an S number. There you go. 724. And we'll put a little C. Uh, a little deeper than that. There we go. Trouble with a cedar, at least the trouble I have with a cedar, Denny, is I can turn it into a hole punch in a second. <laughs> yeah. I, can, I, can, I, can, I can use that as a... Those small tools uh, can be uh, lethal. I can run <laughs> that right in there. Maybe you just, once, once you right. start punching holes, then you decide that this belt is going to be a filigree belt. Yeah. That's, there you go. I can, it's going to have some. lots of holes in it. <laughs> All right. Very adjustable. That's right. <laughs> hey, that's not a bad idea. Just a single <laughs> hole all the way down. P974? 972. 72. Mm -hmm. Gee, that's all right. That's a terrible thing. Oh, that's not the one I wanted. That's why it doesn't make any sense. Let's try oh, BW11. BW11. Uh, Backgrounder. All right. Denny, do you remember what the actual uh, tool name is? Is it? I was going to say A888, but but I think that's a different. A 104, I believe. Yeah, that might be 104 right. 104 5 or something. This we, is we've how got this little series of tools that all have BW on them, but that's not their real number. Oh, and so we have like this okay. little cheat sheet that you have to learn on retail to like memorize the real numbers of the tools. Well, whatever I was stamping on before must have been blue because I got a bunch of blue. <laughs> In that one, but we won't worry about it. We're going to cover right up. Cover that right up and we'll switch this over and go back. You can do so many fun geometric things way. with just the yeah, basic here. stamping tool. It's a 104 A104-5. A104-5. Uh, there we go. There's also an A104, same pattern, just a bit larger area that it covers. Yeah, I just want a small... Teardrop shape in there. And last one is my pear shader, the uh, P972. And we're going to put that right up here on our border. And our scallops. And we're going to make little hanging balloons here or something. That does look like a banner. <laughs> it, it does look like, right, like the a child's, right, child's yeah. birthday party banner. Okay. See if I, okay, don't get it upside down, Marvin. At this stage, that'd be embarrassing. <laughs> All right. By the way, for those of you who might have wondered, and most of you probably haven't, <laughs> I am nervous. This is nerve-wracking. This is live... <laughs> On, no take back on YouTube, and if and if I mess it up in a grand fashion, it's messed up into perpetuity. That's hey, right. But the thing is, we have do overs. We well, <laughs> it just takes a lot longer. It just yeah <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and tries everyone's patience. All right, that's all we're gonna do. We're all gonna right, have to just continue that on down. Now. We're going to kill some time while that dries a little bit, and then we're going to block dye it. Ooh. Is that what you were talking about the other day? Yeah. That reverse uh, yes, inside out? Yes, reverse antiquing. antiquing. Right. <laughs> inside out antiquing. Inside out. Backward, <laughs> backwards antiquing. Yeah. Uh, block dyeing. So-called, I guess... Because originally it was a block of wood, maybe a two by two. Mm -hmm. You wrap an old t shirt around mm -hmm. it and staple it or tack yeah. it or, or just hold on to it. And I am, I tried that once and went, man, there's got to be an easier way to do that. There's, this is just way too complicated. So 
This is my block dyer. Isn't that a cute little yes. sponge? It's a slice of a cheap cellulose sponge. Looks like a cracker. It, it does look <laughs> like a cracker. You could, it would be chewy. But <laughs> we're going to, we're going to. Uh, put some gloves on so I don't really lock dye my fingers here, yeah? and I'll show you how I do that. Well, uh, I got to I got to learn about all the things that Marvin will eat last night, oh, and that he dear. has eaten last night. Oh, listen, but <laughs> shall we say no? Right? right? No, right now. Just let me say this, <laughs> Victoria. I did not bring the subject up. <laughs> right? Mary did. She she did. Now, I could have kept my mouth shut, but you know me well enough to know, dear, that I didn't do that. <laughs> Go ahead. So so we took Denny and, and his wife and Marvin out to dinner last night, me and Tony, and uh, and and after we had finished our meal, which yes. I am grateful for, <laughs> because I have problems with that, and I would not have been able to finish my very delicious steak if this conversation had come up in the beginning of the meal. So thank you. First You're welcome. All, very, just very grateful. But apparently, those two people have decided that they want to eat all the bugs. We are entomophagous bug eaters. Yeah. Yes, we and they, are. They and they revealed I, us with their stories you about you know, bug eating. You can, you, can go, <laughs> you can go through long periods of your life and never run into a fellow bug eater. It's <laughs> It's not something that comes up in ordinary no, conversation. It's not. Especially at a restaurant. <laughs> which was probably it was, it inappropriate. Was after dinner talk. It was, <laughs> I um, think we may have driven the, the table that was next to us off. Yeah, we, that room did empty out. <laughs> sure we emptied the that was, that, was a, that was a coincidence. Yeah. <sighs> um, before I go too much further, let me peel this baby off of okay. here. And that's just like that. Just comes right off. Now... This part, I didn't bring my eraser, but you can. We gotta. I had one last week when Greg was in here. Beautiful. All right. You can take and spend a lot of time rubbing on this and get most of that contact cement off. Uh, but that's another one of the reasons. Why we switched to packing tape <laughs> instead of using this but, silly system? But that's yeah. also the reason to use rubber cement instead of regular instead of cement. thank you instead of yeah. regular yeah. bars. Yeah, yeah. Gonna... yeah. <laughs> you get that on the on the uh, flesh side, and, yeah. and you're yeah, oh. So let me. Up. So, Denny, I don't I don't know if Marvin knows, but so when you use the rubber cement, um, do you have to worry about getting it on the face like you do the contact cement, or uh, can you if once you no, peel it I, off, is I, it still? To tell you the truth, I've never really <laughs> had any experience with that, but I would be leery of it. Right. I, I never had more either, on the careful side. I, yeah. I just don't know if it'll if it acts as a resist as much as it probably, contact cement. It probably <laughs> does to an extent. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right. The rubber cement peels off pretty right. easily. So we're going to use two colors of Phoebe's Ordinary Dye. What we've got here is British tan and dark brown. Okay. Are they upside down? Yes, of course they're upside down. There you go. Just some good old regular dye. Good old regular dye. And those are the demonstration models because I buy my <laughs> feelings by the quart and pour it into bottles. Uh, and he did double pack these on the way here, which was, was good. a good thing because they leaked. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Never we, trust your dye. We've got our standard no spill cup here. If you just, oh, all right. We or just however you We don't want it. Yeah. Sure. Oh, that'll be great. Give me a better background. Okay. I'm going to take and just moisten that sponge. You don't trust me? I, you know. Oh, that's okay. It's better to catch it before it happens. So, I've got a little dye on I've here. I've learned my lesson with Denny a few times. Yeah. <laughs> the only way you can mess this up mm -hmm. is by using too much dye. Yeah. <laughs> you got to have a piece of scrap okay. that you can use to blot that dye off. And you want to keep at it until you're thinking, there's no dye left. There's no dye left, and then you approach this gingerly, 
I just don't, don't just bear down on it, but just approach it gingerly. And it'll start coloring up for you. And once you've decided that you don't have too much dye on your block dyer, sponge dyer, whatever this is, you can get down and get with the program. You can just rub that, and it it also, to a small extent, actually burnishes that leather a little bit, mm -hmm. that all, all that rubbing you do on there. Don't get carried away, or I do this without, I just need a pointer here. I've got some highlights here that I'm going to leave. Oh, I, I don't want variation. it right. Yeah, I don't want yeah. it to be solid. I want it to have some good color, but I don't want to get crazy with it. And I, this is a very light stroke. I am not pushing down on that because I don't want to squeeze too much dye out of that. And let's just go over here so you can Ooh, see like how little dye mm -hmm. I've got on there. There's just not much on there. Okay. That's our British tan. Now we're going to do the edges. And... Yeah, yeah, let me just, for the edges, I don't use this sponge. Okay. Because I, I, it's fine work and I can't control it. I just want the edges of this and the inside of that veiner to be dark brown. And it's difficult to do, but I can do it with a cotton tipped applicator. There you go. Just your standard Q-tip. Bit in Spent too much time in the army. That's not a Q-tip. <laughs> oh, no. no. Cotton-tipped well, okay. applicator. Okay. All right. You sound like my we're drafting gonna, professor. We're going to take a... <laughs> we had to draw a dolly one time, and everybody calls them dollies. Uh, but they are not dollies. They are two-wheeled hand carts. <laughs> and it, she was very specific about that. All right. She said, well, don't you dare call this a dolly. We're going to put... Yes, ma'am. <laughs> we're going to put a little dark brown dye on our q-tip and we're going to blot a bunch of it off here and just as a precaution we're going to go down the edges right and then we're going to creep up that way we know we don't have too much dye in there and i'm just going to take and gently rub that until i've got the border as dark as I want it. And you'll see as I go along that there's a there's a, a light line in here. I'm just gonna leave that. Again, we can get a highlight out of that. Thank you, ma'am. And if if after this dries, it's not dark enough. Mm -hmm. Guess what? What? I put more on there. That's right. <laughs> it's it's when you only use a Q-tip full, it goes a long <laughs> way. There's, there's a, you're not going to use up your dye supply. So we'll go to the other side here and do the same thing. We'll start on the edges. Give yourself a good edge. Just creep up here to make sure that we don't have too much dye in our cotton tipped applicator and that's not exactly see I didn't do the terminology right it's applicator cotton tipped oh like a comma applicator yeah, comma, comma cotton, cotton tipped. tipped yeah sorry drill sergeant I got that wrong I promise you I'll do my push-ups later okay all right <laughs> you, peel, you peel your potatoes later. peel my potatoes later yes <laughs> or uh Gosh, dying cockroach. I'll never forget it. <laughs> if what? If you were back at bugs. If you're, yeah, <laughs> can't stay far away from them. If, you're, if your misconduct was particularly egregious, you had to do the dying cockroach, which was lay down on your back and stick your arms and legs up in the air and then start pumping them. That doesn't sound like much, but it gets... Oh, no, that sounds terrible. It, gets, <laughs> it hurts in a hurry. It's, anyway, so you're on your back kicking your arms and legs and you look like a dying... Never mind. I did say we were going back down memory lane. Yeah. All right. So, <clears throat> that's our dying procedure. Okay. And... 
when we're finished, this is one of those uh, kitchen show uh-huh. switches, right? There you go. There is there your is. finished product. All right, let's. You're there. Hold that. Oh, oh no, this one. Sorry. Oh, there, there we you are. go. <laughs> hold that up so you can see it. And so we've just got British tan down the middle and dark brown on the side, and use whatever color makes you happy. No, that British tan actually has a red tint it, to it. And that's why I like it. It's not the usual yellow tan. Mm-hmm. It's it's definitely got a red tinge to it. Okay. They, I lost them. <laughs> he went completely. away. All right. Okay. Let's put these things. Is it my the, turn? In the waste receptacle. If you would glove up for me, please. Aye, aye. <laughs> I'm going to ask Liz to do the re- repl- apply the antique so we can reverse it. Yeehaw. You may as well do it on a paper towel as not. Yes. Okay. And for this, we're going to use good old Phoebe's tan antique paste version. Yep. As opposed to the antique gel. Antique gel, which is we picked saddle tan, but it comes in tan also. Well, then why why are we using the paste? You ready for this? I'm ready. It's my belt, and I want it pasted. There, there is a reason, but I'll show you later. <laughs> this, this particular tan paste works better. Mm-hmm. It'll make a prettier finish, and I'll show everybody why that is. Alrighty. You aren't using uh-huh. resist on the belt. No resist. It's not been resisted. No resist. That is the most important part right. here. This, if you resist this, you'll get to start. All again. You've gone one step too You've far. One step too far. <laughs> you haven't resisted if so, you resist. And, and there you go. Just goober it on in there. Is that a word? Yeah, that's a good word. I mean, it's a. Denny uses goober a, all the time. It's a peanut, <laughs> but it's also put lots on. Okay. Get it all in there. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> now, what I'd like you to do. Is takes these assorted. You know, I like the way this smells. What <laughs> do you? <laughs> yeah, it's not offensive. No, no, uh uh-uh. It's not quite as snappy as my aftershave, but it's not offensive. Okay, all right, don't comment on that. All right, now what I want you to do is take it all off. All righty, I put my bit, dirty sponge aside and I got a fresh one. Every bit you can, and that's why I call it reverse antiquing. Where ordinarily you put an antique on, what do you want it to do? Stay in the impression, yeah. right? No, you want to get it all off, and that's why you're and, using that piece of sheepskin. And that's why I'm using yep, that piece of sheepskin instead like a of a sponge or paper towel. Yep. Wouldn't go. Yep. So just go ahead and get a fresh one, Liz, and just keep and going. Keep going. If you do a lot of this, you guys, you need to start raising the sheep. Well, I have to <laughs> invest in a, in a sheep ranch. All right. All right. So that's that's it. So there is our reverse antiquing, and of course that'll dry, and you can put a finish on it. Yeah, well, we're probably just gonna spray some masters on it, and but you don't have to. You don't have to. That's right. The another aspect of, of this procedure is you can use whatever finish you want on. Ordinary antique, you got to be careful that you don't use a finish that lifts the antique out. Yeah. Well, on this one, you want it to lift the antique out. So whatever finish you put it on there, if it makes your applicator tan, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So that's our reverse antique. Now, let me show you some samples here. In the old, let me get... Are we done? I do believe we're done, but we can get more. That's right. We've got more. And, we've got more. All right. So, let me show you some examples oh, here nice. of reverse antiquing. And I uh, will use this as a, yeah, let me see if I can zoom in just a, little as a pointer device. Uh, if you could, because... If I hold it up, all it's going to do is wiggle. Yeah. Are you going to do your table dance? No, no table <laughs> oh, dancing. Yeah. We Just also talked about Tony's camera last night. 
All right, I, I don't know how close I am. I was just trying not to get it too wiggly. All right, we'll see what happens there. We'll see what happens. There we go. Yeah. Boy, that's pretty darn good. All right, so you can see this is what we just used, the tan paste. British tan paste, not a big difference. Light brown. Notice I'm on, I, I've got a theme going here. All of these are very light. There's no Sheridan browns. There's no dark browns. You defeat the purpose. If you use too dark of an antique right. in there, you can't see it. And then you can see the different gels. Tan gel, settled tan gel, and light brown gel. Which, I mean, they're still really cool effects. Yeah. The, you just don't want to get darker than what you right. block dyed. Right. you block dyed. Yeah. What, what's the... Yeah. Doesn't make much sense to me, but yeah. then most of life doesn't make much sense to me. <laughs> okay. You might ask yourself, or ask me, Marvin, why didn't you just dye this tan? The whole thing. And then block dye over it. Because you don't get the same effect. I asked myself the same question. And so I did it. And this bottom one here is one that was dyed tan. Let's see. Where is that one we just did? There it is. This, come here, sweetheart, was dyed tan and then block dyed. And here's the one that Liz just did. And there's a big difference. Yes, there there's is. a big difference and between And as it dries, those. it'll keep lightening a little and bit. And it'll lighten up yeah. even more. I mean, that might be an effect you like, but it doesn't give the same effect. These, depending upon your taste, as you can see, they get darker as they go. But this is, this is a nice, to my eye, that's a nice effect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a nice color. Yeah. Well, and with those gels, they do act, if you don't resist... They act as a stain. They will stain the leather more than the than the antique paste will. Right. Yep. The right. antique paste Thank really yeah. doesn't act as a stain at all. It it goes in and it comes back out, and you get a little bit of color. But with the gels, you get a lot more color. It's time for us to hydrate. So yeah, <laughs> this is the. It it looks like I'm taking a drink because my throat is dry, but in actuality, I forget what comes next. So. <laughs> <laughs> the time. <laughs> uh, all right <clears throat> excuse me so that's all right marvin but what would it look like you ask yourself on carved leather not stamped leather i'm so happy well you he's asked. got a page to show you oh. <laughs> all right <laughs> now this is your standard uh springfield leather company sells this low embossed belt blank that's it right that's what it's yes. called low embossed that's l-o-w-e i wonder why they call it low l-o-w <laughs> <laughs> it could be because that's the surname of the person that designed it that made the original yeah pattern for the i'm sure denny might tell you that it was purloined a little bit uh-oh <laughs> <laughs> oh man no denny wouldn't i was <laughs> what what for those of you who <laughs> missed Wednesday, you got to go back and watch that video get our inside to joke. get that inside <laughs> joke. All right. So, uh, I did the same procedure. British tan, dark brown on the edges, and then these various antiques. I like the saddle tan. That looks That's, good. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that, that, that is, it's a nice... Mm -hmm. Nice. It's different. Yeah. But not ugly. No. Uh, no, it's not. So, there you are. You want to practice a little bit with uh, a different technique? Try reverse antiquing. And if anybody comes up with the proper name for that, then it probably is. Please put it in the comments. I, mean, gosh, I, I think you've I, named it. You're, I, you're I, I, I don't know. Well, no, but see, once again, I'm Denny. I, I'm pretty sure I read that somewhere. I didn't come up with that. Don't tell everybody. Well, that, no, I, well, I, 
I read it somewhere, and, and, and I just then I thought, well, that's what everybody does. No, <laughs> that's not true. That's not what everybody does. All right, and we're going to give you just a brief, let's see here. Oh, sorry. No, okay. We're going to. <laughs> you keep wiggling at the camera. Well, really change, I bet. I'm sorry, Tony. If I just hold still, because somebody might want to know. Well, what's on the rest of these pages? That we're going to go. Guys, this I, looks I'm legit. Dying to we're going to we're going to go briefly through this. This looks like one of the sample books that our vendors bring to us. The, uh, like here's leathers you could buy. <laughs> this is what I use when you sell uh, your belts. Well, well, when I sell them, but. All right. But to remember what you sold. <laughs> These are obviously <laughs> yeah. <A> little, <laughs> little inch and a quarter squares, I guess that's inch and a quarter. Dyed different colors. So I can remember what that particular color looks like. Now I know that this is a is an agricultural product and every piece of leather is different and so those aren't exact patches. But they give me an idea of what that particular color looks like, but better than that, when someone says they want a brown belt. You can say, what brown would you like? You got to narrow it down, please. <laughs> yeah. Brown to, is a large And category. I can show them, well, we got light browns and we got dark browns <laughs> and we got reddish browns and we got yellow browns and on and on and on with that. So then we got some colors, we got edge coat, so I can see what different color edge coats look on things. These are different effects from EcoFlow Gel. Tandy product, I don't know. Uh, how old do those look? Boy, back when we thought that that was a fancy belt. <laughs> or basket weave. Whoa, uptown, big time. I, uh, these are at least 40 years old. But I could show a person what a different width the belt looks like and different colors and what mm -hmm. different choices they have. Let me spend a little time on this one. Well, there's some these are, patterns. again, these are geometric patterns, all done with stamps. Some block dyed and some just regular antique on there. Get down here. I, that bottom one is beautiful. I, it, it's that, see, I'm... That one and that one. Is that right? Now, see, I I like that reverse antique thing, but you're right. That's I like that that pattern. Mm -hmm. That pattern is, yeah. a, is a nice pattern, isn't it? And it's, it's, it looks... Well, it is busy, but it isn't complicated. It's just stamps. You just... Uh, yeah, but Just one if, at a time. You, if you repeated that, you'd have to be oh, careful. It's a, uh, if you chose leather craft as a hobby to occupy your spare time, that baby will do that. <laughs> that will occupy your spare time. That one and this one down here, whoops, down here both. Yeah. Will kill a couple of hours of your time. That's fun, sure. though. I like it. So, um and, I and those are wide strips. Those are like these. You know, I was thinking the quarter? same thing. Uh, I'll bet you they are inch and three quarter. Uh, yeah, yeah, inch and three quarter. And that was the style back then. Yeah. You know, wide belts, big brass buckles, and right. Uh, and lest any of you think that uh, this was a uh, result of my hippie period. Trust me. Mark has been very specific I, I was, that, that I, he's not a hippie. I was never a hippie. <laughs> no. Uh, what do they say during the 70s? Oh, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, right? Yeah. Well, two out of three ain't bad, and I'm not going to go any further into that. <laughs> anyway, I, I just, um, there's oh. Sergi Stamps on there. Just practice so I can go back and remember how I did that. So I don't have to keep using scrap leather every time I go to use the silly stamp. So that's what that is. It's just a, a method for me to... I got a limited amount of space in my brain and I don't want to keep this stuff in there. I got other things I want to remember that are more important. All right. So... That is Marvin's swatch book. We are finished with antique 
reverse antiquing. We, we are not finished. Just real fast, though. So Ralph asked, have you oh, ever used Ralph. a printer's rub roller to apply antique? Brayer. B-R-A-Y-E-R. -E Google that baby for me, if you would, please. Brayer. B-R-A-Y-E-R. I'm going to answer your question, but first I had a... You had an epiphany. Word. <laughs> eruption. A word eruption. That's I don't know what like to call it. Hey, hey, Marvin. Connie is coming to make her first ever visit to Springfield Leather, Leather this weekend. Oh, yeah. What, what was it like on your first visit? I, uh... Well, it's a cliche, and it doesn't do its service. But picture your toddler in a candy store. I'm telling you right now, there is more stuff. Oh, if Teresa's man. out there somewhere, she's smiling. Any of you know Teresa from that used to work on our retail floor? She called us the candy store. The candy store. So, <laughs> so it looks like Brayer is a brand for rub rollers. Rubber rollers is called a Brayer. And the answer to your question is no. I never thought to try that. <laughs> that, that, that was the simple answer. I've just brake. complicated oh, that's it. That's just what the tool is called. The tool is called a oh, rubber okay. roller the printers use. It's a is brayer. called a brayer. He has weird information in his I, head. I, don't ask me why I know that. <laughs> that's why he has a swatch book so he can that's, a brayer. Right. That's, <laughs> that's, uh, and purloined. Or b brayer, one who brays, right? Your donkey is a brayer. Yeah. Never mind. Oh. All right. Hee haw. All right. <laughs> We are not quite finished okay. with our trip down memory yeah. lane. What's next? What you may ask is in this. Ooh, this oh, is a surprise. I you wouldn't would... even tell me what this was earlier. I wouldn't hey, no. <laughs> what's, what's, what's in your tube? What's <laughs> it behind the brown paper? What's behind that door? Now, we're going to put Denny on the spot right now and see if he recognizes this. Yeah, that's that uh, we were talking about, Kevin and I. Were Nature Tan. Nature Tan. That yeah. good man. Give me a bump. That's all right. That when uh, when let me let me. Are we? I need to fold. There we go. It was, I guess, two two weeks ago when Denny and and uh, Kevin were making the trading cards, mm -hmm. right? And they had. They're traveling back through their memories of simpler <laughs> designs and carvings and got on the subject of nature tan leather. And I thought to myself, I think I've got some of that somewhere. This is it. This is all I got left. How long have you had that? Since the 70s? At least 40 years. Wow. <laughs> At least 40 years. I, yeah, Marvin, you sure are a hoarder. <laughs> well, <laughs> now, now you know. Have you been using it? I'm not. No, no. It's, it's, this is homely. This is not attractive. <laughs> no, that this lends itself to your block dying. It method, does. So. It does that, and I used the heck out of it. I, shame on me. I, I, <laughs> now, what did you? I liked it. Like no, I do. That's what I no, do. No, no, no. You asked me a question. <laughs> oh. Wait, um, oh, why did I hang on to it? Oh. I mean, I said you were a hoarder, a but hoarder. maybe that's where you... That's, that's what... <laughs> yes, I am a hoarder, but that's not why I saved this. I saved this because... Who throws perfectly good leather away? No, that's true. Not me. <laughs> no leather crafter. Stuff we costs too hoarders. much to just toss it away. I had to dig for a while. I had this rolled up and stashed inside something. But I found my candy. Your nature, nature tan. tan leather. And so if we can get rid of this, throw that back. we'll throw that on the table there with a bunch of shark crusts and uh, so if you wondered what uh, Denny and Kevin were talking about there what is that seven eight at least maybe okay, eight, Denny, nine. you got a gauge oh we got a gauge as long as your coffee's not next to it you're allowed to touch it <laughs> <laughs> yeah seven eight seven eight what a gauge is there yeah yeah so huh nature that's nature tan what is 
Did we see what nature tan was on this stuff? Nature tan is, I'm pretty sure it's a vegetable tan <laughs> leather that they retan some way or another to well, the color. Uh, it, it, the color really isn't very deep. It, it, it's, it almost looks like a, it's uniform. Like a latica, or but, no, the, the Allen tan is what it reminds uh, me of. Yeah, a little other, bit. other than the but, center, yeah. you know. I don't remember ever using it this color. I dyed it something else. <laughs> However, I did it block dyeing or ordinary dyeing, but I don't believe I ever made anything and left it this particular color. And who knows why they chose this particular color? Lost. Hey, in the mists of years time. Ago, we don't. We can't figure out why they did a lot of things. Well, that's right. <laughs> why? Why use X-ray film when <laughs> you know we had tape back then? Well, I tell you what, the internet is not that's interested in nature tanned leather. It doesn't give me anything. Is that right? There's nothing on the. There's nothing on the first wow, page. Nature the, tanned leather. The go back machine just, isn't going it, far enough. It goes to natural, uh, like what's natural tanned natural leather and just tan. vegetable tan. All leather. right. So we've got. We're going to change the subject here. All right. As we did on Wednesday, radically. So Liz, you just well, you, that you're a radical fella. To the side here. Oh, I'm radical. All right. Okay. We are going to talk about dressing the edges and burnishing leather. All right. Finishing the edges of leather. That is my favorite thing to do while I'm in here. Not a new topic. <laughs> a topic that these videos have covered many times. There's many ways to do it. There are different ways to do it, and I hope to show our viewers something they may not have seen as far as edging goes. And, and uh, Liz and I talked a little bit about it, and you think they'll probably see something they might I think so. Yeah. Before. Marvin does All things. right. This is, uh, so we got a belt blank, and we want to edge this, and we want to, to burnish the edges, right? Is that the right? Yeah, burnish yeah. the edges. Okay. And, well, let's just pretend like we know what we're doing here and we'll get part of it done here. Boy, that's almost too big of an edger, but it's your cutting nice though. It's a oh it is <laughs> it it it's sharp. Yes sir. I paid attention during that video, did I? Oh you mean like the two hour video yep. on sharpening every tool in yep. the whole world? And that was, uh, that was quite the video. That was you know I had used a strop all the time I've been working leather. But uh, after I watched that video, man, I went down and bought me a grinder with a buffing wheel on it and got to work. Never looked yeah, back. Yeah, never looked back. Yeah. And I don't know that my edges are any sharper, but boy, it sure is easier. <laughs> it's, it sure is easier. All right, let's get this out here. We're not going to do the whole thing, but we'll go through the steps here. All right. And the next, well, let me get one more out of here. Liz, if I flip that oh, it's fine. and smack you upside the face, I apologize beforehand. I, I hit Tony Come in on. the face with, with enough uh, money that I'm bound to get payback at some point. <laughs> the, uh, all right. <laughs> If this, uh, by the way, if this belt blank looks like it's got a wiggle and a wobble in it, um, I asked him for a, a piece of scrap, one that wasn't perfect going out on the floor because we're not going to actually make a belt out of it. Now what do we do? We moisten the edges and we get out our block of uh, feeding glycerin soap, right? Okay. That's what I use. That's what most people use. Marvin's not Marvin. <laughs> not Marvin. Marvin decided that this substance already got the water and the glycerin soap in it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to skip a step and just use this. We'll squirt a little. Ah, it works. Oh, I, I stole your saddle. A so. little. <laughs> <laughs> we'll squirt a little of that liquid glycerin soap on there. 
and just go down the edge. And that moistens it in, in one operation, all right? Mm -hmm. So that's the theory anyway, and I got it over on the edge and didn't mean to. But. Well, that's why you do your edges last and not first. They, yeah, well, all right. So we've got that moistened. Now we can take whatever slicker we want to use. We can use a slicker like that. We can get back in here and get us a piece of canvas. And we can start to work on that, right? We can, listen, you just hang on to that. We can get over here and start rubbing and start doing that. Or we can get a slicking board. A slicking board. Yeah, look at this nifty contraption. Looks like an ordinary piece of oak, but it isn't. That'll do it. You take your belt, you slide it in the notch, and it holds the belt upright while you're slicking. And you can see it comes in various widths, and those widths... Did you buy it like that, Marvin? I had a friend make it for me like that. A friend with a table saw. And that's was, why... What was their name? Oh. <laughs> Richard, I, um, Richard the Carpenter. Richard the Carpenter. Richard the Carpenter. Uh, if he's, I, I doubt he's watching, but Richard the Carpenter made that for me. And I sometimes told I feel him, like I'm on Sesame Street with you. With the names. You got all these. <laughs> got got Larry, Larry the Barber and Paul the Wood Turner. <laughs> And right and then there's and the cookie monster. The <laughs> so now this edge is upright, and it is a whole lot easier. Yeah, because holding your whatever while you're trying to burn it. Just whatever like you're using just stays right there, and then you just slide it down and just keep on going down the edge. I might have to make myself a board, Marvin. It, right? It. You can't put your holster in there. You know. It. Yeah. Okay. But if you're working with strap goods, yeah, this is kind of snappy. And let me just tell you this, and I meant to say this before we got started. Everything I'm about to show you is purloined. I purloined <laughs> <laughs> from Bob Park. I took a uh, workshop mm -hmm. on edging leather from Bob Park. And learn everything that I'm about to show you. I didn't invent any of this. This is not my idea. Bob Park. That is nifty, though. Bob Park has forgotten more about edging leather than I'll ever know. It was a it was a great experience. Anyway, he's the one that told me about this. And how easy is this to make? Each one of these slots is a curve a kerf width, right? The width of the saw blade. Okay. So he ran it down once for this slot. Two, three, four, and put me an extra one over there. So it's, I mean, it, you know, there's not a lot of measuring to it. You just run it down <laughs> once, oh, twice. Man. If you make if you make a whole bunch of belts at once, you can just do whatever width your belt always is and do a bunch and it's then right. make yourself a slicker that you just go all the way down, all of them, all at once. <laughs> you can not, burnish like four belts at a time. That. You could do that. Oh, my. That's leaning it up. So <laughs> we've got our... Marvin, Josh Burnishing wants to know board. if there's a place where he can look at all the stuff that you do on the interwebs. If the question is phrased another way, does Marvin have a website? Or, yeah, or an Instagram or a Facebook or... Nope. TikTok. Sorry. <laughs> or TikTok. Yeah, what, sorry. What's the town of Wyoming you live in? I live in the town of Bar Nun. You're going to have to Wyoming. make a trip to Bar Nun, yeah. Wyoming, Joshua. I'm sorry. You're not <laughs> You're not the first person to ask that. Well, and you no, can watch I these don't, videos. Uh, and then I don't you can watch have our video for don't October. Have a website. But since you ask, and I don't know why this triggered this, I've got to back up for just a second. And don't back up too far. There's a wall. Back up. <laughs> because this reminded me of something. When I opened that up, you knew what that was mm -hmm. right away. And even though you accused me of being a hoarder, I did hoard it. I did save it. Having pieces of nature tan 
in my possession makes me a certified geezer. Right? <laughs> Well, I am. You can't find it on the internet anywhere. I am. I think you're the last person the that's got some. Now, I am not accusing Kevin or my friend Denny of being geezers, but they are Good. buttoned right up against geezerdom. <laughs> they are getting close. <laughs> well, Kevin's not they here, are, so we, we can say that he's made it. Getting close. So, thank you for that little. I went backwards, I thought. I wanted to make fun of Denny with that, and I forgot what you forgot, I forgot all, about all about it. <laughs> all right, so let's get back to what we're doing let's now. See, that shows your age. Well, no, it, well, and it shows that I'm still you forgot to make fun of nervous it. <laughs> about what I'm doing. All right, so one of the options uh -huh. of burnishing the edges on your belt is a piece of canvas, which works like a charm. Yeah. But can I believe be improved upon? And how come you didn't make your board a little bit deeper to fit more belt down in it? Deeper. Make the slots deeper. Probably because the wood was getting expensive. Because it was a piece of one by, and that's how deep it was. We could get a two by. I could have used a two by, I guess. But then you start to have not enough peak up if you want to make a one inch belt, say. Yeah, yeah a one inch or so, three quarter or something yeah. like that. That's so that was, that was purely arbitrary. <laughs> um, it's the, the nature of the board I had. Uh, so this is your alternative to a piece of canvas. I mean, it's still a piece of canvas. A canvas mitten. Mm-hmm. How wonderful is that? Is that? I'm telling you what, you slide that unit on there and you just rub on that all day and not have to grip that little piece of paper. It doesn't roll I mean, up out of your piece hand. Of you got a good grip You just on go it. and when that side gets used up, you go down here and you can move it around. And you can make sock puppets. <laughs> the, <laughs> it is. Hey, Marvin. Standard. Get your mitt on. The. Uh, <laughs> This is standard Springfield Leather Company canvas that my wife sewed. You cannot sew canvas on a, on a class four. <laughs> it's not no, working. it's not happy. I don't care how good you are. <laughs> you ain't going to sew canvas on a class four. So my wife made these for us, and uh, it, it's, it's pretty simple to do. Well, it should have been. The first one I did, I made in a, if you'd let me borrow that for a second, Liz. I made more of a mitten shape, right? It's got contours to it. And then I discovered I couldn't get my hand inside of it. <laughs> so this one belongs this to Liz. Cut. That's a lady's cut? <laughs> That's a cut mitt? This is yeah. The rest of them just work. Now, if you wax the edges of this, I, I'm going to you know, pretend now that I've got this all smoothed out and I've got some uh, cordovan or dark brown or something die on those edges and I want to wax those edges which is a common procedure mm -hmm. I have first two choices of wax you got your beeswax and you got your paraffin wax or candle wax or whatever you want to call that if I got something in the way there we go let me and Tony could go to the overhead Tony, go to the overhead for me, please, <laughs> before I have... There you go. So I got two pieces of wax here, and it's a simple matter just to go back and forth on the belt and put some wax on it. Or you can, if you prefer, use paraffin. And you might ask, what's the difference? Why? Do I prefer one over the other? Do you prefer one over the other? I should. I've always I should've. used. I always when I wax the edge. Yeah. I always use paraffin. Do you? I always use beeswax, and I can't tell you why. Maybe it's because I. Whoever well, taught you probably used. I know. I knew Tom the beekeeper, and he gave me a bunch of beeswax. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I got. A, I got a twenty-five pound block of beeswax, so I may as well use yeah, beeswax. You give but, into that stuff. But let me tell you that although we still yes. Although beeswax works, this paraffin makes a nicer looking edge. 
this gives you a satin finish. Mm -hmm. That gives you a shiny finish. Sure. So if you want a nice shiny finish on there, paraffin is your wax of choice. I I've always found if I'm going to wax the edge, I want to burnish it first, right? And then wax oh, it yeah. and re-burnish it. That, yeah. And well, any kind of a finish that you're going to put on it, you better have on it before you wax it. <laughs> yep. Because it's not going <laughs> to take. It's not going to take the finish. Been waxed. So after I wax the edge, I also burnish it, and that's where this comes in, like a dream. You just now let me get over here where people can see. You just take and pull that through your mitt. And it just shines up that edge like a dream. So easy to do. So another reason that you might want to make you. I'm going to make me a board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can have Terry mitt. make you some mitts. The, uh, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Will. She'll sew them right up for you. All right. Let me think. For, oh, yes. I'm going to. Uh, no. Got more to say about that. So we got any questions, Tony? No, buddy. No, you're good. There's your very own canvas mitt. You always wanted one. I, I did. <laughs> I did. And Tony, sir? I got one over here for you too, partner. Yes, sir. Your very own. I'm ready. Canvas. All right. I still got I still got my doorknob over. You here. got your doorknob over yeah, there. I, I used it. <laughs> you, I used is, it. Is that what you use to get people's attention? No, I got my back. Oh, no, you got your back. <laughs> yeah, and then if people are too far away, you just <laughs> you got your I sound talk system. To them through a tube. Oh my! Didgeridoo. <laughs> That's a little All right. Too big. I, I can't. I can't make noise with that. There is another way that you can burnish the edge on a belt, and that is using a Dremel tool, power system. Mm -hmm. here. And let me get a white background here. I dump all these out. Let's see if this was, is in camera range here. And dump out this box of tools. We got those? We do. All right. These are wooden burnishing wheels designed to use in a Dremel tool. I realize that Dremel is a brand name. There are other rotary tools. I'm not endorsing Dremel. It's just the one I have. Okay. And so you pick a wheel. And as you can see by some of these, there you go. Some of them come with several different widths of wheel. Uh, some of them are just plain. Uh, that, one, one. that one would be pointy. Uh, <laughs> so the first time I saw this was when Bob Park showed it to me. But after that, it was the Sheridan show. So I walked through this show, which is not a small show, looking for I mean, those it's, little it's wheels. It's kind of cute. Well, it's not huge. <laughs> but we're talking about Sheridan, Wyoming here, right? <laughs> not Sheridan, Illinois. The only thing Illinois, that's big there is the Cowboys, probably. The, uh, trying to find these little <laughs> wooden wheels. And finally, I did. And I bought three, I think, which is all the person had. And uh, don't remember what I paid for them, but it was handsome. Stuck them in my pocket, ran out the car, put them there so nobody would steal them, and then came back in and finished what I was doing. <laughs> Today, uh huh, you can go on eBay, and you can get individual wheels, sets of three or four. Go on Amazon, put wooden... Leather burnishing tool on there. Boom! Dozens of those little wheels wow. pop. So there you go, Dean. Yeah. That's where you can find them. They're, they're, they're just all over the place. And don't ask me about the woods. Um, they're wood. <laughs> and it's a pretty simple procedure. You just pick one. Let's pick a single I'm assuming here. these ones are the ones that you got in Sheridan. They must have been. 
Right. Because those, like those, those look like a those look like a group. nice set. A group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hi. All right. And so, as you would imagine, you just turn the thing on, and the Dremel tool that you can control the speed on is a nice thing to have. And you want your ears burnishing with it? You just run it up and down the thing, and it, she it does all it. right. Does it do any better than this or this? No. <laughs> it seems like it ought to. But you don't have to go like this. You don't have to keep rubbing back and forth. What you do have to do is pay attention. Because you turn that thing on and leave it in one place for too long, burn and you got a nice burn right there. Yeah, it, you can do that it, on our wheels too. It, it'll burn it up. So if you're going to do that, keep it moving. Put your, however you put your moisture on, whether you use this or use the block of glycerin soap, doesn't matter to me what you do in the privacy of your home. <laughs> it's not my business. <laughs> but you can, you can, whatever you want to burnish it with, you can use those tools. There are mm. some circumstances where this is a superior tool. And I'll give you two examples. Could you grab your basket? Please? Yes, sir. And let me put these in here before I have a mess. I do love these baskets. The, uh, the first one I'll show you, it actually doesn't have anything to do with the basket, but we're going to need that in a second, is, let's see, can we, no, no oh, oh, there you go, okay, nope, come on Marvin, this, <laughs> that white background, let's change the background, <laughs> Why, what do you say, huh? All right. There we go. This sophisticated tool is an eighth inch wooden dowel <laughs> that I had to to taper a little bit to get to fit in the in the in the Dremel tool. You put that in there, and you've got a pancake holster with two slots in it, and you want to burnish those slots. Try and do that. Yeah, you can't that. do it. Can't do it. Try and do it with that. Uh, he, it isn't going to work. Get to the edge a little bit. <laughs> you put it in there and turn that thing on and just go up and down that slot and it furnishes it just as sweet as can be. I needed that literally so, three days ago. That is one advantage of using a Dremel tool. The other is something I discovered after I watched the basket video. Oh my, I was one of the lucky people that got a template, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I couldn't wait. And I had a set of 18 inch leather circles, six deep or something, I mean, I was gonna do it. I cut all those little slots and got it all just like that. And now I wanna burnish the edges. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a bad Oh yeah, uh-huh. Well, you can get out your little tool and try and do that till you get to the curve. You can do this and uh, if you're one of our incarcerated customers, mm -hmm. you've got time on your hands. That's you right. Can, you can sit there and do that if you want to. But this tool saved my bacon. I could go in there and just follow that curve and burnish that thing up just sweet. So it worked very well for those purposes. So let me look around and make sure that that's all I wanted to say <laughs> about burnishing. Where is the lid ah, to that box? Okay. Uh, yes. I think that. I believe that I that's about all we can do. Mittens and Dremel tools and and uh, burnishing boards. All right. So how are we doing here? Oh, we run ten minutes over or something, Tony. We got. Yep. 
All right. Well, then we've got time for me to blather on. Oh, I know. I'm about to bloviate, but I promise not to get any on you. It's good. <laughs> what? <laughs> Come on, you got to Google that word, Liz. <laughs> no. Bloviate. Picture a politician standing behind a podium saying words that are meaningless. I think I've experienced that. In a that loud times. voice. Uh huh. He's bloviating. Right? Just going on and on and on and on about nothing. Full of hot air. It's full of hot air. So anyway. Does he talk there through was, a tube though? That, no, he doesn't <laughs> yeah, talk see? through doesn't talk <laughs> through a tube. Up right there. There's a couple more things I can show you here in the last few minutes we have left, and they don't have anything to do with uh, bloviating. bloviating or going back in time or any of that good stuff. How do you spell bloviating? B-L-O, just like it sounds, B-L-O-V-I-A-T-E. There you go. Consummate nerd actually just typed it in there. Oh, yeah? All right. Well, that's because me, he's a consummate nerd. Let me get a sip here. Hmm. <laughs> Bloviating will get a guy a dry throat. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got, I'm going to stop. Oh, I'm going to get myself in trouble here <laughs> with somebody I know and love, if not you guys. Okay. Oh, I know, I know I'd love you, but that's not what I, what I mean here. All right. Uh, I got it written down here on this piece of paper so I don't forget. Some time ago, sometime in the last year. Okay. I'm watching. <laughs> Sorry, I got, I, I'm watching SLC Live. And in the chat, somebody's ask a question. Can you carve latigo? Mm -hmm. And didn't he give the right answer? No. <laughs> no. And, and if you could, why would you want to? <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, but when somebody asks a question like that, oh, Marvin's like, well, let well, me now we'll just about see that. about that. We'll just see about <laughs> that. Delve into this. So this, you know, so, challenge accepted. So let's blow the eight around. I got, I got <laughs> this, the, fortunately, see, I do all this down in the basement. So a, my wife knows where I am, and two, she can escape. Right? <laughs> just leave me down there. Just in case you blow up the house. Just in case. All right. So. Uh, the 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 problem here that's it's retan right we talked about that uh, yeah, it has been vegetable tan it has been vegetable mm -hmm. tan the trouble is it's been fat liquored and waxed and loaded and whatever they call it so it's kind of hard to get it wet uh, it's yeah. it's difficult to get it wet so let's see here let me get my proper background here and we'll I can put zoom in a little bit too samples no uh, yeah. well or I can let me just hold Come them on up in here with let me just hair. hold them up. Yeah, don't hold it up. That's, all right. Look, I bet you I'll just zoom all the way in. We'll just zoom the camera no, all the way. We don't <laughs> want to do that. That shows all my flaws. Okay. Oh, so back oh to back the front camera was showing that anyway, back, wasn't it? <laughs> we, you promised we weren't going to go into that. I think okay. we keep talking about right. OVA show. Yeah, all your that's flaws. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> so it's going to be difficult to, to see. It's a subtle difference, but I tried. Stamping, since I'm not a carver, I tried stamping mm -hmm. one side of all oh, of that. Am I making people oh, seasick? I think it's still twitching a little. Oh, okay. Anyway. You're standing up to this camera. There you go. All there right. It is. All right. You can see I just did a basket weave. And a geometric stamp on there. Then I tried to moisten the latigo. After you stamped after it? After I stamped it once. Okay. Just did a control there. What does it look like with just, no moisture at all? Okay. And of course, you can moisten your applicator and put water on there. And, and wait. Come back in two hours and it'll be beaded up right there. You know, he's sitting right there. Water hasn't evaporated. All right. So what we need is something to break the surface tension. Something that will let that moisture soak in. This is where your nerdy part comes out. And you could use 
soap. Whatever you wash dishes with. I mean, don't stick your latigo in the dishwasher. I didn't say that. I mean, if you wash dishes by hand, mm -hmm. you would use a soap that you could put on here, and the it'll the water will soak in, and you can moisten that. Because that dawn gets rid of your grease. Yeah, it cleans ducks. That's right. <laughs> that, that's too easy. Okay. That's too easy. Tell me the nerdy explanation. <laughs> I, I can't even say that. That's why he's here. Let's get over here. <laughs> Synthropol, or Synthropol, is what's called a surfactant. Whoa. All the words today, guys. A surfactant, something that breaks surface tension, like Dawn. <laughs> Just like Dawn. The difference is... This costs about 10 times. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, no, that's not. The difference is. We sell it. You can get it right this here. Is, <laughs> we don't. I know. Synthropol <laughs> is, 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 is actually an expensive liquid because you need, use so little of it. It's used in the dyeing industry, in the fabric dyeing mm -hmm. industry, to even out the dyes. If you're going to put a quarter of a ton of cotton in a drum and dye it scarlet, you don't want it splotchy. You want it to be even, right? And so the dyeing industry uses synthropol. It's just it just breaks the surface tension. What's nice about synthropol is that if you wanted to know how much to put in a gallon of water, I would say a fourth of a teaspoon. That's not very much. And don't do any more than that. You don't need any more than that. It's just a few drops. It's a uh, what was the example I gave you? Oh, yeah. I was using this to, to dye duck feathers for my other yeah. life, fly tie. And a, a duck feather does what on the water? It doesn't absorb no, it. No, it floats it right down yeah. there. It water it beads sure right did. off, like mm -hmm. water off a duck's back. A little boobies right? with their butt sticking up. <laughs> you could. You could. Uh, we're headed there. We can. I watched a duck. When we were in San Francisco, we were taking the, the, the little boat out to uh, Alcatraz to tour the, right. the prison. And as we go, we look down, and there's this duck that's just tootling across the, you know, the top of the, the water there. And then suddenly it just disappears, just all the way down, and then comes back up with a fish. <laughs> it was impressive. That's that good. Guy. Yeah. But then he was all dry once he popped back up. He couldn't stay very long, though, because he was dry and he floated. <laughs> he got tired of swimming. Anyway. So, you put, you, you got a, you a two-quart saucepan going here, mm -hmm. boiling water in it, and you put some feather dye in there, and you throw your duck feathers in there, and you just bob along with the boil, right? And they don't sink. If you take this and you put one drop in that two-quart saucepan, all the feathers go boop. Right, they, you don't touch them, you don't stir them, they just sink. It's an amazing substance. Anyway. Uh, so is it, is it taking? It is. Like the. It's breaking the surface tension. That's all it's doing. And then once it's dry, it's it, good. It, like, I don't it's know. not a detergent. Okay. It's not to clean it's anything. Not, it's just to break. It, just it does it foam to... up if you put it in water. Okay. And, and shake it, you get bubbles. Okay. But that's not, it's not a detergent. Huh. It's a surfactant. The only reason... Which is any, maybe why you'd want to use this over Dawn? The only reason I would use this over Dawn is dyeing process for fabrics. They use metallic dyes. They use acid dyes. They use alkaline dyes. So they don't want whatever the surfactant is to change the pH. Synthropol has a neutral pH. Gotcha. That's the only advantage. I think you just like In, to say the name. I just like the name. I've got Synthropol and you don't. <laughs> it's a, it's I, I said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, use Dawn or some other. I do not endorsing Dawn. Use some other liquid soap. It, it works. The impressions were much more crisp, much deeper. And so... I yeah, come to Springfield Leather, and I ask my friend Denny. I said, "I it works well with the stamps, but will it carve?" And let me have. There you go. 
And this is what Denny did for me. Just a little work with a swivel knife and some tools. It carved, stairs. you know, I think the main reason that Latigo isn't what you, what most people would want to carve on is you. it's dark. You can't see a right. lot of the detail. You can't see any detail. It, it, it's why, why? The question is, why would you want to do that? Yeah. <laughs> and and I agree. also, are you negating the properties of Latigo yeah. by cutting right. slots right. into it so suddenly it's going so, to absorb right. water? All this did as... was answer the question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. You can carve Latigo. It didn't get any deeper into that, into why you would. But I, yeah. I could answer that in this fashion. Somebody needed a two-inch strip of Latigo and bought a whole side. Now, what is that person going to do with the rest yeah. of the Latigo? Right? I don't know. But th So the answer to that question is yes, if you use some dishwashing soap. Can we soap do an experiment real fast where we look at what it looks like when you just put water on a piece of Latigo versus when you take the sponge it, and wipe this on? This does takes a few seconds to soak in itself. Yeah. Right? It doesn't soak in instant. Mm -hmm. So that would be one of your watching paint dry experiments. Well, uh -huh. water, it'll, water by itself will just beat up like wax. Right. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you've got a brand new wax job well, on here. your car and, and it rained. Yeah. It just beads of water there. That's this is about four ounces of water, I guess, with four drops of, let's do this somewhere where you don't get anybody wet. A centripole in there. We'll just put it on there like that. And as you can see, it didn't beat up. No. Uh, let me We're over here. Turn nope, that. No, I'm sorry. Over there. I don't know. Okay. And we'll just leave it there for a yeah. few seconds and okay. see what happens. There you go. Yeah. It, right. When I was using it, it took a while for it to soak it in. It takes a while I, for it to soak did, in. Just leave it two right on my cutting board. We'll just sit there oh, watching. all right. I did two or three different we'll applications of it. <laughs> right. And it took, takes yeah. two or three applications. It's not, uh, thank you, Liz. No problem. Uh, it's not quick. But it did answer that person's question. Yes, yeah. you can carve Latigo. And uh, it really didn't discolor it very much either. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. All right. So let's go to another gear here. Ah, there you go. And you can see the, the difference right away in how it be beaded. And, and, and uh, this over here has already had that on it. Yeah, so. Oh. Yeah, right. should have given it. We should have done it on the plant. Yeah, on the put fresh your, put your that. water on that. There you go. Yeah. Now that'll be fun with there. squirt bottles. All right. There are circumstances in leather work where you want to make one material stick to another. And there's a couple ways to do that. One is Glue <laughs> works pretty well if you want to stick one thing to another. But what if you want to stick your cell phone? What if you want to stick your cell phone to your cell phone case? Do we will both, Tony? If you can... Ah, there you go. So, put that back together. Come on, sweetheart. Come on, sweetheart is not what I say in the privacy of my own home. Okay. So... <laughs> I got a cell phone case here. This, in case you wonder, that's a piece of shark. That's some mission pig. And that is what we're going to talk about. There's actually mission pig on both sides. And of course, we left the spine free because, as we learned in our wallet making, mm -hmm. you, you want that to fold and be able to fold back on itself. You don't want to glue that down. All right. So, my phone is sticking to that case. There we go. All right. So. I'm interested. Feel that. You feel that any tackiness there? Yes, I do. It is glue is what I'm asking. Do you think no. I put glue on there? I no. No. All right. I could have used a magnet. That could be just sheet magnet, right? And it sticks to that. The problem with using magnets is you, whatever you need to stick needs to be ferrous, <laughs> needs to have iron in it, <laughs> right? Or the magnet's not going right. to work. There is a third alternative. 
to how to stick smooth objects to leather. And that is this substance. I didn't mean to take it all out of there. That looks, get your phone off there, Marvin, just like what's on the inside of my phone case. It's a product made by 3M. I am not endorsing 3M. <laughs> we have a 3M here. We do have a factory. Yeah. 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 I wonder if they need an endorser. Never mind. <laughs> anyway. I'll take you over right. there. Okay. This is called nano <laughs> suction sheet. And I didn't make that it's up. It's very high tech. If you go to our friends at Amazon or wherever and put in nano suction sheet, this is what you'll get. It's adhesive on this side, it's, and it's got a film on this side. And what it is, is a zillion microscopic suction cups. Huh. It's what it is. It's a so this has a film on it? This has yeah. a film on and it that, that you off. peel off. That you peel off. So what this is, then, is just a zillion microscopic suction cups. Some would and say nano-sized. Nano-sized <laughs> suction cups. And that's what's holding the phone. I just need to squeeze that on there and it's not coming off. Do I sound like Ron Paul Peel trying to sell people something at 2 o'clock in the morning? Anyway. Uh, yeah, that's pretty nifty. So if if you... And that means you don't have to have a, a custom-sized cell phone case. Right. So for every new phone that comes out, you don't have to buy you don't plastic have new cases. Phone. And if you, this is a simple case you want to make for your customers or your friends and family, and want to know a way to stick the phone in there. Good old nano suction sheet. That is neat. Works. Stuff. It is neat stuff. It it is actually pretty clever stuff. I have to admit. It might be coming soon. The. Uh, <laughs> uh, what did we we looked that up. Let's. Oh, alien tape. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> it's a clear, thick tape that you can buy on a roll. Yep. It's the same substance, just, you just clear stick it to instead your wall, of black. And then you just put your you mini can, figures on the right. wall. Right. You, you just stick it up to the wall, or the wall has to be smooth. <laughs> and you can <laughs> stick things to it. Boy. And the, before I forget, one of the beautiful aspects of it is if it gets dirty, it'll lose its stickiness. So you just put some rubbing alcohol on a cloth and rub it four times, and it's brand new. Yeah, it's clean right off. Suction cups are wide open again. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it cleans them right out. <laughs> I don't know if you heard Tony's question. What if you rub it five times? If you rub it five times, Tony, a genie will pop out. What? Does that answer your question? You go to Wonderland. <laughs> I'm a genie in a bottle. Uh, all right. So what I'm trying to say is it's pretty easy to keep clean. And if it loses its suction, that's all it takes. Just a little rubbing alcohol mm -hmm. and it cleans it right up. You're back in business. All right. One last thing, and then I'm going to let you folks mercifully go. All right. You may have come across uh, in your adventures in leather working a leather plane, a wooden Right, like you'd plane a board flat. I mean, I've seen them for wood. But I've never plane. seen one for leather. There are planes made for in leather. In Spain? And I just, <laughs> actually, not even close. <laughs> actually, Japan. <laughs> I mean, I don't, is Spain closer to Japan than we are? I guess it depends on which way you go around the world. I, yes, it depends upon whether you walk or take the bus. Which <laughs> reminds me. Tony, I've always meant to ask you, do you ride your bike to work or bring your lunch? Uh, both. Think about it. I do both. Okay. All right. These are leather working planes. If they look just like miniature woodworking planes, because that's what they are. Aren't they cute? Right. Aren't they cute? But they were sold on a Japanese leather working site as planes for leather and they have a blade that you need to keep sharp and you can adjust the depth of cut and let me see here this is deep enough and I pull them instead Ooh, right, of pushing maybe a little bit closer let there you me go. go like that and you just pull that come on sweetheart 
Maybe that isn't stiff enough. This doesn't um, work on chrome no, pan. No, here you go. It doesn't lay flat, me, but that one, this is that a piece one's of import. Stiff. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, but, I don't am I not? To be a, it not? I'll try and be right there. How's that? And if, that'll. If you had a belt strip in your little. That'll run. I was going to say, if you block. put it in your belt block. Ooh, that'd work. Or oh, we had that baby planing yesterday. Let me see if that. There we go. You can hear that or not, and you get little leather little shavings. shavings out of there, and you get a perfectly smooth edge. Yeah, those are pretty neat. <sighs> Me? Save a lot of sanding. It would. And that was why I got them. The, the problem is the leather really needs to have a stiff hat. It needs to be like wood. <laughs> Logically enough. Yeah. I see. So if sure, if you've got some some bridle or some harness and you want to smooth the edge, that that unit will do it. It it's a it's a uh, it's not a toy and, and it's not imaginary. Uh, it's it works. not imaginary. Not imaginary. <laughs> you mean it's really all here? right? It's really real. <laughs> what? I didn't. Uh, <clears throat> I may have purloined all this stuff, but I didn't make it up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I uh, and then we got to get them in the right box. Believe it or not, only. I shouldn't say this. Only a clever person would make this. The flat one only goes in the flat box. The round one goes in the round box. They are not interchangeable. Hmm. How much, so, how much did one of those set you back? I knew somebody was going to ask that, and I have forgotten. But I will say this: uh, the pair of them more. Than what did I say? Oh, the other day. More than a nice meal out with <clears> your spouse, less than a truck payment. How's that? <laughs> That's why I ride my bike to work. <laughs> That's, so um, That's because he has to pay for the horses for his children. They weren't they weren't breathtakingly expensive, nor were they inexpensive tools. Tony, I, mm -hmm. I I'm gonna guess maybe thirty dollars. Or so a piece. I cannot remember. I'm sorry. And then I said that he has a cheap spouse. So that's it. Those are all your that's tips and tricks. All the abuse that I can heap. Look at that. Just on the viewers. Read, do you read Japanese? Do I read Japanese? Yeah. I barely read English, my friend. Yeah. That's oh, let's look. Find a website. Yeah. Tony, switch to the overhead, if okay. you would, please. There we go. And. This is the synthropole. Except for this, this is this, not. That's not. That's water. And yeah. which has. It's mostly that whole side thin. was. And yeah. this is the plain water, which is still beaded up. So it does take a while, but it will moisten your latigo. Breaks that surface tension. Danny, do we ever need our surface tension broken? A good surfactant. Uh, quite is often. A happy surfactant. <laughs> We need so, to keep some of that in our in our back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring out the synth. Uh, oh, we need to break the tension right here. <laughs> <laughs> That's is... usually when you burn Tony. We need a little tension <laughs> breaker after that. <laughs> oh, man. And right, here we go. Uh, Brian is putting some stuff in here. Brian. My Brian. Yeah, Liz is going to share it. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Let's see here. My, fa my, my father, Marvin, and I did countless projects growing up. Two of my favorites are a wallet made out of python that I used for many years and a sheath for a butterfly knife uh, with a butterfly stamp in the middle. <laughs> I recently passed that knife hey. and sheath on to my son. Excellent. Right. Thank you, Brian. Right. Good man. Very cool. So I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you both. Of thank course. You for, thank you so for much for coming. You, for, no, oh. thank you for putting up with my... Bloviation. <laughs> we go going oh, on and on and on. Supposedly, so you're driving. You you go west, right? Right. You go home. Right. So apparently, Terry Beeson said that tomorrow there's a fly fishing convention in Joplin. Well, it wasn't. It oh, was yeah. in Clinton. So that's the. Oh, oh. Clinton. Yeah. Oh, wait. No, it's no, not. No, it's not. No, I, that's I, on I, the passed, I passed Clinton. It's yeah. On the yeah way. You go through Clinton. Yeah. yeah. Fly time expo up there. Yeah. 
Well, you you can go show him some stuff. Listen. Yeah. Then he's got to teach him classes. What the, the, the mistake, and it was an honest mistake, Tony. Starts at 9 a.m. Was you mentioned this while we're still on the air. Where my wife can overhear this. Oh, concert. I can move to my son. You can be on the phone. Your son will be on the after party because he's on Twitter. Because if I, if I send her a text and say, sweetie, I'm going to be late because I had business to do, she's going to know that I was at the fish well, Brian, That's pretty much Turn your ears off, Brian. Pretty, pretty well. Pretty Don't well come on, Brian. Jeez. There you yeah. go. So thank you all. All righty. And thank you, Liz. And thank you, Denny. And my man, Tony, and the rest of the crew back there who are all trying to keep straight faces. There you go. Thank you, guys. Marvin, it has been it. a wonderful week. Thank you so Thank much for coming. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. I had a good time. Go ahead. I next always trip? do. Uh, where's my next trip? Yeah. Here? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, I'm about to run out of... <laughs> trip juice. Of, 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 no, I'd love to come back. Yeah. I don't have anything else to say. Well, Start I mean, yourself you can another notebook. I could, well, that, that's true. That's true. Well, I, I mean, can stand here and put people to sleep. You're welcome to come just hang out while Denny makes stuff. Well, too. now we could do that. Yeah. Oh, boy. You could come do trading cards with us on Friday. Be careful there what you, you wish for. <laughs> I don't know quite how we'll fit all three of them, yeah, but, but we can make it work. Uh, we can, yeah. We, can we need a U-shaped cable. Cards. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. There you go. Those lean U-shaped work <laughs> stations. Oh, <my. laughs> all righty, folks. Well, we appreciate you joining us today, and we will see you next week. I hope everybody's got a great weekend, and if you want to keep hanging out for a little bit, jump over to Twitch, and we will be there for a little while on our after party. So, thank you all. Bye, Bye guys. Take care.